are that kind of God, Lord, that do not change much, but who loves us, Lord, enough, Lord, to send your Holy, your Son, Lord, to die on the cross for us. Welcome to all of us here and for those who are online, a very warm welcome to you as well. I, let's start with a prayer and then we commit this time to God. Father God, we give thanks to you and we ask, O oh Lord, that you speak to us individually and corporately as a church as well. Father, that you minister to us into our hearts, deep inside our hearts, O oh Lord, where only you can, Lord, where only you can touch. So, Lord, we open our hearts to you and we commit our day to you, our service into your hands. Lord, you come and minister to each and every one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, uh, we had a PCC meeting. So, all PCC you are disqualified to answer this question. Because <laughs> you know the question So today I want to ask a question to all of us here But you cannot look in your Bible We will ask a question okay. You know Judas 12, made, uh, Jesus has 12 disciples, right? And one of them, Judas He betrayed Jesus and he died So they have to choose from two And the one who became a disciple of Jesus Who was it among the two? What's his name? Matthias, yes. But who's the other one who was not chosen? I cannot look at your Bible, you know? Anyone online? No. Okay, okay. Well, we also were stunned. Like, uh, all right. <laughs> okay. Do you know where is it from? Okay. So I give you an opportunity. You can go and have a look at it. Find out who's the other person who was not chosen. What's his name? Then it's good to know. So the next time somebody asks us, who's the other person? We straight away we know. Who is this person? What's his name? See, Anu. Yeah, see, Anu too. <laughs> yeah, see, Anu. Eh? Basabas. Eh? Yeah, okay, that's right. His name is, it was mentioned, but it's quite long, right? Which verse? Okay, chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, yeah, verse 23. Okay, de depending on which version, so some would say Joseph, some call uh, Basabas, his surname is, you're quite long, right? So, hallelujah. Today we found out a new thing, Joseph, Basabas, just, just, uh, how you pronounce that? <laughs> just, okay, praise God for that. So today, we know something new that, you know, God, you know, Justice, uh, Joseph Basabas was there when they were choosing who was going to replace Judas. Amen? So today, our message is reconciling men to God. Reconciling men to God this morning. And we're going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 to 21. And also we will read from Romans chapter 5, verse 1, 2 and 10. Okay, 2 and 10. Can I invite us to stand as we read the Word of God together? I read from Amplified Version, Classic Version. Okay, this morning. Okay, let's read together. Consequently, from now on, we estimate and regard no one from a purely human point of view in terms of natural standards of value, even, even though we once estimate from, from a human viewpoint and as a man, yet now we have such knowledge of him that no, no longer in terms of the flesh. 
Therefore, if anyone is engrafted in Christ the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself, and gave us a ministry of reconciliation, that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. It was God personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but cancelling them and committing to us the message of reconciliation, restoration to favor. So we are Christ's ambassadors, God making his appeal as it were through us. We as Christ's personal representatives beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered you and be reconciled to God. For our sake he made Jesus Christ virtually to be seen who knew no sin, so that in and through him we might become endured with viewed as being in an example of righteousness of God, what we ought to be approved and acceptable and in right relationship with him by his goodness. And in Romans 5, it says, Therefore, since we are justified, acquitted, declared righteous, and given a right standing with God, through faith, let us grasp that the fact that we have peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Through Him also we have our access, entrance, introduction by faith into this grace, state of God's favor, which we firmly and stately accept. And let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, it is much more certain now that we are reconciled, we shall be saved, daily delivered from sin's dominion through His resurrection life. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. So in, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, we read just now, before that, you know, uh, it was mentioned that God has created, you know, created us and given us Jesus to save us. And save us not just in a physical sense, but save us because one man died, he died for all. And then when he's risen, we who believe in him, we are safe. Therefore, it's not just a physical, physical body, but a spiritual body. Yeah, a spiritual experience. And therefore, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16, that's why we don't see one another just in a physical sense. Right? It's in a spirit. In our spiritual becomes alive. And therefore, we can say that we are a new creation. We are no longer bound to uh, a sinful nature. But whereas we have a freedom to live in this new nature in Christ. Amen? Amen? So you say to one another, you are a new creation. Yeah, you are a new creation. You are a new creation. We don't need to live bound to our sinful nature. We can live this new creation life. Amen? So say to one another, I'm living this new creation life. Amen? Amen. So what is it about reconciling men to God? Why do we need to be reconciled? And what does reconciling mean? Okay, let's have a look. Reconciling means to return to favor with somebody, okay? Or to receive one into our favor, okay? So it's either us, we, we have... Uh, we, to have returned to favor, we are out of favor with that person, we return to favor. Or we ourselves receive that pe person into favor. Or it can also mean to change mutually. Sometimes, you know, it says that to exchange, you know, like 
you want to travel to Korea and you need to get some Korean money, right? So you go to the uh, exchange, money exchange and exchange money. Okay, somebody wants to go to Korea here? Okay, right? So you exchange. There was an exchange. That means in our relationship with God, we were out of, not in favor. When we were young, have you... Uh, have you done that? I don't know if you've done it with your friends or we you see your friends do it and then, you know, especially when we're very little and then we're upset with our friends or upset with our cousin when we play, we say, I don't friend you anymore. Did that happen to you? Like, yeah, yeah. So, I don't friend you. Then don't want to play. Oh. But then, then you see your friend playing new things and you're like, I cannot tahan. Can, can I play? You know, they reconcile. But like, you know, and your friends say, Yes, that means she received you into favor, right? Right? Okay, uh, so that's what happened with us. Because of sin, yeah, has entered in, and we, we were born into this world, and we were, sin, we were slain by sin. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, let's read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you he made alive when you were dead, slain by your trespasses and wow, slain. Okay? Slain by what? We were slain by our own trespasses. We were slain by our own sins that have caused us to be not in favor with God. No favor. Okay. When somebody gives you favor, you happy when you have favor with people? Yeah, we are. When you go to some place and then you go to a restaurant, you have favor with the uh, the person who's the huh, what do you say the waiter or waitress. Then they give you the best table, right? Oh, you found favor. Uh, and then when you go to a party with your friends and things like that, and and you and your friend bless you with the best gift of all. Wow, you feel favored. Right? Or you are in school and your friends, some of you children, you are watching here and sometimes you are in school and your teacher favored you. Okay? Uh, bought some sweets for you. Or your friends give you something special. I know for children, they like stickers, right? Your friends give you stickers and you feel favored. So you feel accepted and loved. We were out of favor. We were not in favor. We were not in harmony with God because of sin. But God say, it did not stop God from loving us. Are you happy about that? It did not stop Him from loving us. Instead, it says, even in Ephesians 2, it said, with intense, with great and wonderful and intense love, He saved us. That's how great God's love is. And even in you know, in, in, I forgot which one, which person. It says that even while we were his enemies, okay, even while we were his enemies, he died for us. He reconciled us. Even before we believe in him, Jesus already died for us in order that we have this reconciliation. But what about us? Many of us here, many of you online, you have chosen Jesus. You have chosen to be reconciled with Jesus. But is there any part of our hearts or any part of our lives that is still not in harmony with Jesus, not in harmony with God? Sometimes in our friendship, you know, with certain people, we say, okay, this one, this part of my relationship with this person, okay, I favor this person, this man, okay, or this woman, my friend, or this, say, so, okay, I can do this for this person, but I will never do this for the second person. I, uh, I mean, what I mean is that, let's say you fight with your friend, let's say this friend, my friend is Jenny, okay, I reconcile, okay, normally I will fetch Jenny to work. So I will choose to fetch Jenny, I'll reconcile in that fact that I will continue to fetch her to work. But maybe in other areas of my life, I would not 
be reconciled with her. In that in example, I uh, will not invite her to my house. Or I will not invite. So there is like partial, you know, reconciliation. Or what you call partial acceptance or partial harmony. Is there any part in our hearts, you know, that has gone wrong? Or any parts in our relationship with God that is not reconciled? With the Father. And therefore, do we see it? Sometimes we don't realize it, right? Until God shows it to us. I say, oh, excuse me. No, he doesn't say excuse me. Yeah. He'll say, he will, he will show you. This part is not reconciled to Him. Today is a good time to ask the Lord, Lord, would you help me to see? You know, sometimes when we have hurt God and we don't even realize that we have hurt God. And it's a good day at the beginning of the year. And even as we have received a message that God says He wants us to extend our hands, right? To make that preparation because He wants to, to bless us with so many things. But to prepare our hearts, this is part of our journey. Reconciling God in every area of our hearts. So, let's ask God. Let's ask ourselves. Do you see what has gone wrong in your relationship with God or in your relationship with others? Do you see that? And if we don't, we don't know. Maybe today, let's pray. Maybe even right now. Shall we? We say, God, help me to see. Help me to see and acknowledge the wrong. And help me to ask for your help. Yes, Lord, even right now, we are asking, help us to see. We thank you that you have brought us into your kingdom. We thank you that you've given us that opportunity to know you and to say yes to reconciliation with you. But God, we also acknowledge there may be things in our hearts and even things with others that are hidden that cause us not able to be fully reconciled to you and not fully reconciled with others, God, would you help us even right now to see? Help us, O oh God, not to be afraid to see it and teach us, O oh Lord, to bring it to you and to allow you, Jesus, Maybe it's something that we have done wrong. And if it's something that we have done wrong, let's ask the Lord to forgive us. Lord, forgive us. We repent. We ask that you cleanse us. We ask that you fill us with your Holy Spirit even right now. Yes, Lord, as you reveal to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. One of the things that I recently encountered with the Lord is that it was so unexpected and in one of my morning devotion and the Lord just touched my heart and I began to realize, honestly, Lord, I have not obeyed your voice. I have not obeyed your instructions in your word. 
There was rebellion in my heart towards your word. And I was thinking, oh God, I'm a preacher, you know, I'm a teacher. And, and it really struck me. Sometimes we take it, for me, I, I take it so lightly, but actually it's only the Holy Spirit who can touch us and say, you know, it's, it's serious, it's sin. You, I have chosen to rebel and not to obey God's word. And therefore, this next part that the Lord wants to uh, tell us, many of us, we know this, but maybe today we take, you know, actions, even deeper actions concerning it. We know that reconciliation with God only comes through Jesus Christ. And we know that because of what Jesus has done on the cross, we have all this the, we, some of us will call it divine exchange. How we are reconciled, there was an exchange. There was an exchange. So what is this exchange that was done, you know, through, through Jesus? What was it done? What was it? What was the exchange? Let's read together, okay? Uh, I took it from Derek Prince. I think some of you, you would know it. We have this, when Jesus died on the cross, when he suffered for us, what does it mean to us? Okay. Jesus was punished that we might be. Wow. Sometimes we have to drink it in a bit. He was punished that we may be. Forgiven. When our friends, when we apologize to our friends, we say sorry, and our friends say, "I forgive you." How do we feel? We feel relief, right? <sighs> now can breathe. Before that, cannot breathe. <laughs> so stress, so tense. But when we receive forgiveness, wow. When we know that we are forgiven, when we know that we are back in favor with our friend. There is peace in us and peace in our relationship. So Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. Jesus was that, that we might be healing is possible. Next one. Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness that we might be made righteous with his righteousness. Next one. Jesus died our death that we might receive his life. Amen. Jesus was made a curse that we might enter into his blessing. So remember the exchange. Next one. Jesus endured our poverty that we might share his abundance. And Jesus bore our shame that we might share his glory. Jesus rejection that we might have his acceptance with the Father. And Jesus was cut off by death that we might be joined to God eternally. And lastly, this one on this list, but it's not the last, there are many more in the Bible. Our old man was put to death in him that the new man might come to life in Amen. So remember the exchange. There is an exchange. There is an exchange. But the word that came, that keep repeating beside the name of Jesus, is that we might, we might, we might, and we might. Means it tells us something. Are we choosing to believe that? Are we choosing to receive that? Huh? Right? Because reconciliation is already done. On the cross is already done. But are we receiving the exchange? Are you receiving the exchange? Are you receiving the forgiveness of sin? Are we receiving healing? Continuously keep receiving our believing and receiving that our, uh, we have life? Are we continuing and believing that we have 
abundance? Are we continuing and believing that we share in God's glory? Are we continuing to believe and receive that, that we are accepted? That when the lies of the enemy come and say, oh, uh, you're not good enough. But we are able to receive God's acceptance and say, oh no, God say, I am accepted. I am loved. Are we continually receiving and believing that we are in Christ Jesus? So my question is that, my friends, do you find it hard to fully believe and to receive this divine exchange? Do you find it hard? Do you find it difficult? Yeah, maybe some of us will say, um, this area, I cannot. <laughs> this part is still God, I need help. And it's okay. Because I, I feel that maybe today is the day that we face this. And we come clean with God and say, uh, really cannot, <laughs> this one is hard. Is hard. Do you find it hard? Do you find it difficult to fully believe? Do you find it difficult to fully receive the divine exchange, to fully believe in it? And we can pray, Lord, help us to know, help us to believe, help us to receive this divine exchange. So maybe in our reconciliation with God, it's not just about receiving Jesus, but reconciling ourselves to the Word of God. to fully, to the word, reconciling ourselves fully with the word of God. Amen? And we sing, we can sing, oh Jesus, Jesus, we love you, Jesus, yeah, we know you love us. And then, but reconcile fully to God's word. I, I find, I, I mean, like I share with you, I, I got struck in my heart, say, wow, I, when I read God's word and I realize that I did not follow God's instruction in this, and sometimes not only don't follow, uh, and not following, but out of ignorance sometimes, and sometimes it's out of resistance. I don't want. I oppose. That's what rebellion means. I oppose, not opposition party. I oppose. <laughs> I'm on the opposition side of God. I oppose. I resist. I don't believe this. It's not true for me. It's true for others, but become a, you know, the opposition party of <laughs> against God's word. But today, may may we be encouraged. Besides reconciling with God on the first day when we accepted Jesus, let's continuously encourage one another. Let us reconcile with God, you know, with His word, with His instructions to us. Amen. 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 So that's uh, our encouragement from God today. So what does God desire from us? What does He desire from us? I'm just highlighting two points from the Bible passage uh, we read and also from another pas um, passage in Ephesians. Uh, no, so from Romans. Let's look back at Romans. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Let's read this again. Therefore, since we are justified, acquitted, declared righteous, and given a right standing with God through faith, let us grasp the fact that we have peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Through Him also we have our access, entrance, introduction by faith into His grace, state of God's favour in which we firmly and steadily stand. And let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the... Wow, okay, okay, hold on. Huh? So what does God want us to do? He, we already have this. Access. We own most of us. We know we have this access, but the Lord say, "What can? How do we respond to all this access uh, by faith into grace, right? And how do we respond to being justified by faith? How? Yeah. Exalt, rejoice in what our hope of 
experiencing and yeah, we are glory of God, enjoying the glory of God. Go back to verse 1. Go back to verse 1, uh, chapter 5, verse 1, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. And we have been justified, and therefore, what is our response? We have been already been reconciled. We have peace. What is our response? Grabs the fact. Grabs it. Okay. You know when you bring your child to cross the road, you don't just like, here, hold my finger, right? You will grab your hand, run across the road. Okay? Right? When, yeah, you grab the hand. Run it. Grabs it. Encourage one another. Come on. Yeah, this is the word of God. Let's hold on to it. Let us grab the fact, grab it, grab this piece of reconciliation. I am reconciled. Grab it, hold it. And what does God want us to do? Grab it, hold to hold and enjoy it, friends. Enjoy this piece of reconciliation. Enjoy this peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Now, I begin to understand why God keeps saying, Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Okay, Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Because a lot of times we see life only through our circumstances. I mean, we just see our circumstances. We don't see that in the spirit realm, in the spirit realm, we are already a new man. In the spirit realm, we are already saved and reconciled and peace with God. And therefore, every day, there is a reason to rejoice. There is a reason to celebrate. And there is a reason every day to enjoy this peace. This peace with God. Amen? Amen. So, first point. For God's desire. What's God's desire for us? Yeah, to grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation, to hold, to enjoy the peace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks to God and celebrate. Celebrate. Celebrate, celebrate. You know the song, Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice, and again I say rejoice, 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 and again I say rejoice. Amen. We can do that. And sometimes life may begin to be a little bit down, but remember, oh, I have peace with God. And we can sing this song, so we re rejoice in the Lord always, because God has given us peace and reconcile us through His Son. So let's say together, I am reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. I am reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I am reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Say to your friend, you are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. <laughs> grabs it. Grabs God's peace. Tell your friend, grabs God's peace. Enjoy God's peace. Tell your friend, enjoy God's peace. Celebrate. Okay. Nanti kita pergi minum-minum, okay? Celebrate. Eat. Celebrate. Every day, we have a reason to celebrate. I am reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And therefore, this is why we'll see rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice Rejoice, rejoice and again I say rejoice Rejoice, rejoice and again I say rejoice One more time Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice Rejoice and reconcile to God through Jesus Christ. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. One
one more time. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. I'm reconciled in the Lord always to God through Jesus Christ. Rejoice, rejoice. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Because the second point is that we have to share this good news. And if that joy is not on our face, it's a bit hard. <laughs> so we need to experience that reconciliation. We need to grab hold of that reconciliation, enjoy that reconciliation with God. And therefore, we just shine on our face because we are in the glory of God. And we will share that message of reconciliation as Second Corinthians said, we are ambassadors for Christ. Don't be afraid. Ask God for an opportunity to share your good news of reconciliation today. Don't say, next year, like God. <laughs> okay? Or say, uh, uh, okay, give Reverend Roy opportunity to share. <laughs> Cannot, uh? <laughs> Not allowed to do that. <laughs> okay, but give me an opportunity today to share your good news of reconciliation. You know, God answer prayers like this, you know, when we want to share the girl so fast, it scares me. <laughs> I remember when we were in Center Point, at that time we did the four, uh, four spiritual law. Uh, four, was it four spiritual? Is it called four spiritual? How to share the, yeah, how to share. So we've done the course, you know, we've done it together, four spiritual law. So I was working in Cactus Cafe at that time. So in the morning, right? In the morning, I came to Cactus Cafe and I told Auntie Cat, I said, Auntie Cat, I learned this four spiritual law. Today, I'm going to share it with my friend. I have a friend who sometimes will come to our cafe. He's my classmate, okay? He's my classmate. I said, I'm going to share. I, I, we're just talking. Auntie Cat, I'm going to share with my friend about this. And he walked, you know, into the cafe. I said, I have to hold true to my word. <laughs> And now I tell you how scared I was. <laughs> yeah, he's not a believer. So he came in, he sat down, I said, oh, okay, well, this is my opportunity. Okay, I, boop, 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 boop. I already say it to Auntie Cat, so I must honor. <laughs> I cannot run away already, it's not in my heart. But, oh. So he sat there, he ate, and then I sat beside him, and I shared the four spiritual law. The important part is that we sow the seed. Don't worry. Yeah, about the person's response. But the important part is we sow the seed. So I sow it to him and asked him, would you, would you like? Yeah, he, he said no at that time. But I pray that God, you know, will speak to him. We just sow the seed. We sow the seed. Another time, I went to Damai to have a drink with my friend. There were three of us. And some, uh, three of them, and they're not really, uh, they're not believers also. And I also pray in my car. I say, God, give me an opportunity to talk about church, you know, to talk about you. So I went in because I'm not going to say it first. So I went in. And then we were talking, 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 talking. And then suddenly this friend asked, uh, Margaret, can I ask you something about church? I said, wow, hallelujah. This is my opportunity to talk. So be brave. Today, are you really, uh, uh, okay? Are you happy, happy? Just now, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. <laughs> so share that joy. And today, be brave and ask, God, give me an opportunity to share your good news of reconciliation. Not just today, okay? Every day, I have people of God. <laughs> okay, let's say it together. I am an ambassador of Christ. An ambassador of reconciliation. Do you want to see your family reconciled back to God? Yeah, definitely. Do you want to see your friends reconciled back to God? Do you want to see this country, the people in this country, reconciled back to God? Yeah. It's time, all of us, to be ambassadors. Not just full-time staff or what, but all of us, wherever you are, you have an opportunity that we cannot be there, but you can be there. You are the ambassador there. And if you need help from the church, let us know how we can help you. But in your field of work, 
you are the ambassador. You know, every day you're ambassador of Christ. You know, as you get dressed, I may encourage all of you, when every time you get dressed to go to work and things are to go out, or even in your house, every day you wake up, you say, I am Christ's ambassador. <laughs> Amen. We have that good news that we are to preach to the nation. So friends, these are the encouragement for God for us this morning is that hold fast to this reconciliation we have with God. And if any part of our life is not reconciled back to Him, let us make a choice to reconcile, especially reconcile with the Word of God fully. Uh, Word of God is Jesus. Reconcile fully to Him, to the Word. Reconcile it. God does not look down on us when we doubt His Word, nor when we reject His Word, but He always encourages us. Come back. Come back. Be reconciled to my Word. Be reconciled to me. Secondly, rejoice. Celebrate it. Celebrate. Because sometimes life can be a bit down. But remember, what we have is so precious. And God said, I will respond, celebrate it, enjoy it, enjoy it. And when you enjoy it, you know, people can see it. Wow, something about you and your God, you know. Something there that I cannot see. In the physical, you, uh, okay, okay lah. But something in the spirit uh, that is so different from me. Yeah, so rejoice it and share it. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So I invite the worship team to come as we sing this song. who wrote this song her name is Helen he suffered you know he has a, uh, suffered from a sickness that caused her eyes to be blind and because of that the husband left her but then though she was blind she focused her eyes she's blind but she focused her eyes
Let's respond to God, to His Word today. Give thanks to God. He has reconciled us. We have peace with God. We have harmony. receive reconciliation by the blood of Jesus. Jesus died for us. Jesus help us to see it. Help us to see it. Open our hearts. Lord, we open our hearts to experience it. This redemption, this price that you have paid for us. Help us to experience it, to see, to know it, to, to experience you, Jesus. What does it mean for you to die for me? Some of us, we may not very, sh- we are not very sure. What does it really mean? We hear it in church. Jesus died for us. Jesus died for us. It's like so simple. Jesus died for us. But we can ask the Lord, Lord, help me to experience your love through your Son, Jesus Christ, through what He has done. Help me to ex- encounter that in deeper measure, in deeper, deeper measure. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Receive, to receive this reconciliation, to receive peace with you. Help me to receive it. Help me to believe it. Help me in my area of weaknesses when I'm not able. God, would you come and intervene? Do something to help me to believe. Do something, Lord, I want, I desire. Say to Jesus, I desire. I desire, even though you find it hard to believe. God is not upset with you, my friends. God is not angry with you. He's not here to punish us because we don't believe, but He desires us to ask for help. Help me. Help me, Jesus. Help me, let the Father say, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. God, help me. I find it hard to believe in this area. I find it hard to believe in this what you have said in your word. I'm finding it hard to believe. Help me to believe. Help me to believe. Help me, Lord. Help me. I choose to believe. Even though I find it hard, but I choose to believe because it is, it's your word and you are not a liar. You do not lie. And so... Let's reconcile back with the Word of God by choosing it. Choose it. Even though our hearts do not feel that we believe God's Word 100%, but reconcile back by taking the first step that is to choose. To choose. To say God's Word, it is true. The Word is true. to help us because we choose and Holy Spirit help us to walk in God's way Holy Spirit is here to help you to believe Holy Spirit is here to help us to believe Holy Spirit is helping us to receive God's blessing to receive God's the exchange that has been done on the cross for us so receive it Holy Spirit help me I choose I choose Lord I choose to believe I choose to trust you when you say to cast my cares upon you, I choose that I can trust you with all my cares. I choose to trust you that you can take care of all my burdens because you care for me. I choose to believe that you care for me. You care for me. Some of us, maybe we feel that uh, it's very hard to trust someone because we were betrayed or we experienced saying I care for you you can let go of that you can let go of that insecurity that you felt of that 
panic attack that you felt when somebody abandoned you, when somebody betrayed you, or somebody has left you alone, or you were neglected. It's okay to cast that to God and let God take care of you. He said He will never leave you. He will never abandon you. for each and every one of us. We thank you that we are never alone. You are here. And from the very beginning, even before we came to this earth, you love us with such an intense love. And every day, you are calling us home. You are welcoming us in home. In every area of our hearts, you are welcoming us home. Thank you that you're such a long-suffering Father, patient with us, ever understanding our hearts. Lord, you are calling us deeper into you. So Lord, we surrender every one of us into your hands tonight, uh, today as we come to you. We surrender each and every one of us. Continue to speak and minister to us. We receive it with a thankful heart and we choose to respond with joy and grab hold of what you have given to us and celebrate it and give thanks to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 